Yo, man, this was crazy today. Uh, as long as Earl and Derrick James been together, it's sad that it come to this at this point in the man career to uh, Derrick James trying to sue him for for money he claimed he ain't get it, did or didn't get. It don't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, you know, uh, now I will say this. Once he got that fight of the train of the year, I just seen a whole different side of Derrick James. Uh, <clears throat> he started all of a sudden being on all these YouTube channels, talking for a long time, uh, taking shots at Bo Mack. And, you know, and then another thing, I remember him saying that he really did. What, what's good, young world? I remember him saying that he didn't want no other fighters besides Spence. And he just was, you know, he agreed to do Jamel Charlo. And, you know, they had some success and it looked to me like it went to his head because next thing you know, he got Frank Martin. Well, Earl was kind of cool with that. He owned Earl Promotional Company. Then next you know, he got Anthony Joshua, Ryan Garcia. How many motherfuckers you going to train? And then if y'all, if you if you remember it right, you know, he didn't even hire no help. He tried, don't y'all remember him saying in the interview that he give all of them a slot for like an hour and a half, two hours, uh, each one. Well, common sense will say somebody going to get cut short in that because as the day go on, you're going to be tired. Towards the end of the day, somebody ain't gonna get your undivided attention. Actually, nobody. And then Earl was finna fight Crawford. This is the biggest fight of this man's career. You should have been preparing for this really years ago, like like Bo Mac did, Bo Mac and Terrence did. But he came out and said he wasn't gonna watch no film with Crawford until they signed for the fight. Then he'll start looking at him a little bit then. Shit, man, These are, this is an elite-level boxer. This is elite-level boxer. Crawford was considered the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world, and you're going to treat him that dismissive. It's one thing for a fighter to be overconfident, but but the trainer ain't never supposed to be like that. No. I don't want no trainer that ain't looking at no film and, and doing that, you know, and getting trying to get the best out of what he can learn about uh, 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 a pound for pound champion. I got to go in the ring and fight who got longer arms than me and undefeated with power. You know, uh, I felt like, I felt like Earl, I feel like Earl, Frank and Mill look like shit. I remember, you know, uh, Frank had fought two weeks before Earl fought. I remember after the Frank Martin fight, I was concerned because I was like, Frank did, didn't look good at all. Uh, two weeks later, you got Earl fighting, didn't look good at all. A month later, Mel fought, didn't look good at all. And I remember him when he said he put them all in slots. Now, now let's just think about this. So you training Ryan Garcia, Frank Martin, Earl, AJ, and uh, Mel, you doing all this at the same time with no help. And okay, I'm quite sure all the years that Derek James and Earl been working together, uh, some days when you in, when you train it, it might take more than two or three hours to work on something. You know, uh, you know to really fix something, you can't you can't just say, "Well, I, I got if I'm gonna do what I can within this slot period, and if that don't work, we'll try to catch up with it the next day." And you think I'm gonna be getting you millions of dollars and shit like that for this bullshit? And, and and you trying to train me and half the rest of the boxing community. It seemed like after he got the training of the year, he couldn't say no to nobody that came in and uh, get trained. So how are you going to really get Earl ready to do who, if it wasn't for him, you don't get none of this? I said that when before the fight happened. If I was Earl, when I'm fighting, you ain't training nobody else. That's how it should have been. That should have been that should have been understood. That should have been understood. And I do remember when Mel first started working with him. Earl always said, you know, uh, DJ know what's up, woo woo, uh, with them. And I just think this shit got to his head. Don't y'all remember 
where he just kept patting himself on the back about the training of the year. I mean, that really meant a lot to him. And that lets you know he been won accolades in the sport, but he didn't get none really when he was boxing. He done got more out of Spence's career than he got out of his own. You know, so, you know, and don't tell me you could have made anybody a champion because you didn't even make your damn self champion. You know, Earl, you know, this is another thing like with these trainers. Yeah, yeah, you got to, you show them how to fight, but the, the work ethic, the will to win, uh, the commitment, you know, all that got to be in the guy already. The trainer can't, the trainer can't do, all the trainer can do is work with what you bring him. And most of them, that's why they don't really have a whole lot of great fighters on their roster because it's a whole lot of other stuff besides the talent that go into uh, uh, making a championship fighter and somebody that's getting all these belts and doing all the shit that Earl did and people like Earl and Terrence Crawford and all that. Uh, even Bo Mack. Bo Mack don't win a lot of fights that he with guys that ain't Terrence Crawford that he trained. You know what I, I mean? Just keeping it real. I don't see him lose damn near most of the fights he fought. That Trout Crawford ain't the fighter. That's not saying Bo Mack ain't a great trainer. That's saying that uh, these other dudes ain't got the same talent as Terrence Crawford. You know, uh, yeah, you could, a, tra a trainer got a lot to do with it. But once again, you got to give him something to work with. I coach sports. Most of my, I coach sports, youth sports for my sons growing up. And I had good teams and I had bad teams. I, call, I I I felt like I was a good coach, but let's just keep. I'm gonna just keep it real. I could only coach up to the level of the players that I had on my team. Without players, I don't give a damn how good a coach you is. You ain't gonna be winning. You need talent out there. You you need you gotta have a talent too. I had years where we couldn't win but two or three games because I didn't have no talent. Without without talent, and then I had teams where I won every game. They had and, I, and those teams had talented players on there, and them guys was talented before I met them. Now you might can bring it out, bring it out a little bit better, but the talent was in the talent is already in these dudes. If if they got talent, it's in them already. Uh, and without without the right character and the right athlete, I don't give a damn how much you know. Uh. They gotta be able to put. They gotta be able to pull it off in that ring. The, the trainer ain't going in that fight. The fighter going in that fight. I got much respect for these trainers, and I think a good trainer is important. But a trainer can't do no more than a fighter. You got uh, Barry Hunt out there in Washington D.C. A good trainer, but Lamont Peterson was the only one that really did something. For real, for real. And he trained fight. He been training fighters for years. How many? Who, who, how many of them besides Lamont you see shine like that? Uh, since Adrian Broner kind of fell off, you ain't seen his trainer bring nobody else out there uh, with no talent like that. You know, uh, and like once again, you know, yeah, training is important, but shit, you gotta have something to work with. One, I used Freddie Roach when Manny Pacquiao was fighting. Uh, Freddie Roach was considered the best thing since sliced bread. Have you even do that? I, shit, do you even hear his name anymore? That him and Manny ain't together. It's more times than not, it's the fighter. More times than not, it's the fighter more than it is the trainer. You you can take all the hell you want. You got he got to go in there and do it. You know, uh, just like uh, what's the guy Jay Leon Love? Uh, and not to diss him, you know, Floyd got him a title, but once again. He was in there with Mayweather Senior, them top dogs. Uh, you still gotta, you still gotta be, you gotta have the goods too. You know, uh, or you ain't gonna be able to keep winning. Yeah, you might can win a win a belt here and there, but you ain't gonna be able to hold it no time without that talent. You know, it, it means a lot. You know, that's why you you give a guy more credit like Boozy Ennis, who 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 got his son like he do. From 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 the rooter to the tutor, you know, uh, Mel was already a good fighter before he met Derrick James. He was a champion before he met Derrick James. Ryan Garcia was already a good fighter before he came over to uh, Anthony Joshua. 
you know, these dudes already knew how to fight. So, you know, uh, let's see what he can do with them. Let's see what he can do with them. But uh, I, I really hate this. It's unfortunate. I wouldn't try to, I, I'm not going to try to say who right and who wrong in this. But I will say I didn't like the way I, uh, Frank Earl or Mel looked in his last fight after he came became trainer of the year. I didn't like how, uh, I didn't like the joke that he said about Bo Mac, calling him Big Mac. I mean, that wasn't even him acting like that, Derek. Did. I couldn't believe he said nothing like that. I mean, that really shocked me. Uh, and, you know, uh, when he just kept big up in himself, and, you know, he just could not talk, stop talking about that trainer of the year, that really made it. That, that was a, you can tell that meant a whole lot to this dude. It meant a whole lot to him, man. It just seemed like from there, everything started going bad. He, hell, he lost three fights last year. And Frank Martin really lost that fight he was in. They gave it to him. And that's because he was the PBC fight in the headliner. But if we being honest, I, I didn't feel like he won that fight. And I, and I fuck with Frank Martin. But I, I ain't going to perpetrate life for no motherfucker. You know, uh, he looked like shit in that, in that last fight. I've said that several times. Earl looked bad in that against Crawford. Mel looked bad in that against with Canelo. All of them looked like shit last year. I find it hard. I find it, I find it hard to believe that that's a coincidence. You know, uh, remember Derek James was having to go do meet and have uh, press conferences and he had to go accept his award and he, he had lots. And he, I mean, he was all smiles doing it because he didn't achieve none of this when he was boxing. He either got more out of his career being tied to Arrow than he ever did in his own boxing career. Didn't even get close to none of this. It took him to be with Spence to get some credit in the sport. So who the hell you think the, the uh, most important piece in this puzzle? Because if a man can't make himself champion, that's, that's <laughs> shit. You know, uh, that's going to let you know uh, what's the most, the, you know, the, the the most important factor in this, I think Earl. I think Earl can get a better trainer. Do I think Darius James is a good trainer? I thought, yeah, I feel like he is, but I think there's much better trainers than him out there. I do. So I don't think. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think it hurt Earl all that much to go with, with somebody else. Derek trained the same way all the time. I mean, he didn't bring he didn't he didn't bring that boy in there with no no different fight plan for Crawford or nothing like that. You know, uh, I, I haven't seen him be able to lay out. I haven't seen a whole bunch of versatility in, in his uh, training methods. Pure pain was good, G. Ain't nothing to a dog. Uh, yeah, man, no, Derek ain't been the same, man. I, that's what I said, man. You know, uh, and you can't give a motherfucker your undivided attention. And you got all these different people you're trying to train at the same time and didn't even hire nobody to help him. That's going to show you how greedy the motherfucker got. Not only do you want to train everybody, but you want to keep all the damn money. I mean, come on, man. Uh, who, who you think you are? You know, I mean, even uh, most of these trainers have, they got, look, Bo Mack, them got a team of trainers over there. You know, most of these dudes, it's, it's going to be more than one person uh, doing the training. You know, I mean, you can, it's only so much one person can do. But when you greedy and and they got the big head, now all of a sudden Derek James can fix any motherfucker who walked through the door. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, man. You know, uh, I just feel like, man, uh, you know, it, it's unfortunate. And then you wait to the, the, the biggest fight of this man's career to want to go out here and train four or five motherfuckers at the same time. And you and and and, and you telling me. You get you you sent him in that prepare Antonio Tarver and, and James Tony said the same thing I said right after the fight. He had that man ready to rip it down for that fight against Crawford. He didn't. I wouldn't pay him shit neither. Sent me out there like that. Uh get it like the Red Cross, baby. I ain't getting you shit. I felt I feel like Spence in this one. Getting you a dime. Because I I don't think I don't know if y'all remember when he said it. Talking about he train them all in slots. Fuck, you think you're going to get top dollar for me? I mean, you got me fucked up. 
That I mean, you know, that's probably how Earl feel about it. Probably felt like he should have kept Blu-ray on the team, you know. And uh, hey man, you know, sometimes you gotta see this shit coming before it get out of hand. You know, really, uh, I, I, like I said, I saw a side of Derrick James I would have never expected after he won trainer of the year. I really did. I mean, that shit really meant a lot to him. I mean, he was geeked up about it. I mean, you couldn't, he was cheesing from ear to ear. And he didn't mind. You remember even at the, uh, at the press conference, he talking about, uh, he can't help Bo Mack then get trained in the year. I mean, get on out here with all that shit. I mean, he really just, I mean, that shit went to his head. He couldn't even hide it. That let you know he wasn't used to getting a lot of compliments. Evidently, because it really went to his head, man. And, and I like Derrick James a lot more being a humble guy. Don't you remember when he said he wasn't going to quit his job? He liked working his job. And, it, you know, boxing wasn't, you know, he wasn't in the boxing like that. And, you know, uh, all that shit changed real quick when he got t- a real taste of that money, didn't it? That money changed, motherfucker. Boy, that dollar bill is something else. That dollar bill, a fool with it, boy, uh, it will really bring out the best and worst in people. I see it, and it's usually more the worst than it is the better. I feel like Spence had changed some too uh, before Derrick James did, but he the one going in the ring fighting. And I said to the cows, come on, when he lost that fight to Terrence Crawford, he didn't quit. The referee stopped the fight, so Earl was in shape. He just didn't have, uh, they just didn't come in there with no no flight plan worth of shit. It, what it looked like to me in that fight with Crawford and Earl, it looked like Bo Mack had Crawford prepared to fight Earl Spence. You could tell they had to watch all the film every time Earl made a mistake, fell off balance, stuff that he'd done over and over in fights. They was prepared for it, and Crawford jumped on it immediately. Uh, Crawford was making mistakes too, but the difference was Earl Trainer didn't look, wasn't looking at film and wasn't getting them ready like that. What Earl Trainer did was just got him ready to fight whoever. He didn't have him ready to fight Terrence Crawford. And when you fighting on this level, it gotta be a fight specific game plan. Yeah, he was knocking dudes out with Blue Ray. I'm quite sure. If the, if he gonna keep fighting Blue Red, be probably the only strength and conditioning uh, team or the thing. I'm sure that uh, you know, he should have never let him go. Everybody been saying that though, you know uh, you know, and that was Earl being loyal to Derrick James. And like I say, man, I learned that uh, hustling the street, man. If you are gonna be loyal, be loyal to your motherfucking self, cause the the dudes who you might be a hundred percent down with. When the shit get real, you'll find out they might not be as down as you thought they was. A lot of times you down with them and they ain't necessarily down with you like you down with them. You know, uh, it's a lot of fakeness out here in this world, man. Uh, and once again, if if we've been if we've been doing things a certain way, I'm speaking on Derek James and Spence, and now all of a sudden you done brought all these motherfucking fighters in here and you trying to flip the script with me. The one who got you, nigga, fuck you. That's, a, that's why I be with it. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. That's why I be with it. So I feel Spence to some degree because I felt like he sent them out there. And, and just so you would think I ain't no ride no wave, go back and look at the videos that I made after Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford fight. I, I went in on Derrick James. So I, been, I saw this shit coming. I had went in on him because I feel like he didn't do his motherfucking job. I felt like he didn't do his job. I really did. Uh, felt like he sent that boy out there fucked up. You know, I felt like he did. I felt like Earl was not prepared for the, when he came in to fight that fight. You know, and, and man, that's that's on the trainer. You know, so I, I say, man, you know, it's amazing how these trainers will take credit all day long when the fighter win, but when the, but when it's a loss, they ain't got nothing to do with that. Well, that's, you know, how, how is that? How do you get credit but don't take no uh, don't take no blame? And if you go look at my videos from back then too, I said I felt like Derrick James should have stepped out in front of a lot of that shit because he know you you know you sent this boy with a fucked up uh, game plan. 
you know, uh, and it was obvious to everybody in the stadium that Crawford had a better game plan than Spencer. By the second round, that was obvious. You know, uh, yeah, you could say all the right shit in the corner, but what was you saying in training camp? Because if we weren't working on this shit in training camp, ain't no need talking about that shit in the corner now. It's too late. You got to prepare. You know, and uh, for the way it looked and the type of the type of person that Earl, the way he carry himself, this shit at the point of no return, there won't be no coming back from here. Yeah, man, in fact, the game plan was was trash. Straight trash, you know, uh, you know, and you got a hundred motherfucking fighters. Do and, and not only that, dog, you ain't used to training nobody but Spence. So now you got five tri fighters you trying to train at the same time, and you think you gonna put this, and you think you really giving a guy the same, the same of what you been giving him the fuck out of him, man. Uh, I don't blame Earl. I don't. I guarantee you wouldn't ask a Spence, could he train these fighters? Just everybody came in the gym. He just, you can't say no all of a sudden. I mean, motherfuckers, you gonna train at one time. Who the hell you think you are? You know, and the good trainers that got a bunch of fighters like that, got a bunch of help in there with them. You ain't trying to pay nobody. I mean, I mean that, that money went there. That money for that money would change a motherfucker, man. You got a, got a taste of that real money. You got a taste of some real fame. Although you, it is somebody else's, but since he's close enough to it, he making it be about him now. Now, I bet you in his mind, if it wasn't for him or Earl Spence, he probably have told himself that shit. Really. You know, so if that's the case, we're going to see. Let's see what, let me see how you do with the rest of these fighters. But I got a funny feeling. When Earl drop him, a lot of other people wouldn't cut him off too. I just got that funny feeling. I just got that funny feeling. Uh, maybe Frank Martin that was the only reason why they dealing with him is Earl Spence a lot of that shit probably. He might find himself shit out of looking at him uh, with no fighters. It might end up like that for him. <laughs> Real talk. Uh, the, I, 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 I see him losing in this. I really do. I, I think I think Derek James gonna be the one to lose out when this shit all said and done. I really do. You know, uh, uh, Earl might have been on some on some shit over there too. I don't know, but all I do know is I'm not paying no top dollar for you to train five, six more motherfuckers at the same time you training me. And if I've been working with you, I'm quite sure Earl can tell. This ain't the same quality of training that we, this ain't this ain't how we've been doing things. And here's what I've, I've been saying this too. And when you, if y'all get it, if you get time, go look at the media workout before that Derek James and Earl Spence did right before they walked, fought Terrence Crawford. And they look, he looked so bad on the mitts. I really want to change my pick in a fight I did, but I had went too I had I had went too far with Earl at that point. And I wasn't gonna change horses in the middle of the race. But after seeing Frank look like he did, and after how Earl looked in the media workout, I, I, I was less than confident on how that shit was gonna turn out. That's me telling the, the honest to God truth. Cause when I saw how sloppy they looked on the mitts, I said, okay, he working with too many fighters. Now him and Earl done lost something. Because, it, I mean, the damn thing was falling off his hand, all kind of shit, man. Just, it was terrible for them to be knowing each other. You you, you seen it too, that you young world. Uh, yeah, he was missing the miss everything. That, and that goes to show you, as long as they've been working together, ain't no way in the hell it should have looked like that. Ain't no way in the hell. That's what I knew then. I really want to change my pick, but I hadn't already bet to fight you know, at the casino. And I had, you know, I, the, the people on my channel, I had I had went too far with, I wasn't going to flip the script like that, but I was damn sure concerned after I saw that media work and I said, man, this shit might look bad in there. And it did. I wouldn't be surprised if Frank Martin has another, yeah, exactly. Now, he, now, he might have a little bit better showing this time because uh, he ain't training Earl and, and Mel and, and a bunch of more motherfuckers at the same time. Six hundred, six hundred said, yeah, "What's up, dog?" 
Yeah, man. I, yeah, I, yeah. They got a piece of me, dog. I um, I fell for it. I got the, well. I had bet the fight early, and after I saw the media workout, you know, you can't go get your money back from the casino, so I had to live with it. And uh, but I was less than confident looking at how bad they looked on the motherfucker miss. Uh, and and if you just go look at old fights when it was just him and him and uh, Derek, how sharp they was on the miss and shit like that, because. Derrick James ain't made, you know, he ain't been training nobody but Earl, nobody else, nobody else but Earl. Now all of a sudden you're going to be able to train five or six motherfuckers and, and get the same, and, and get the same, uh, uh, you know, you, and, 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 and get the same thing out of them, no. And then you try, and then when you say you give everybody a certain amount of time, Sometimes, dog, it might take three, four hours in the gym to work on something. But when you doing it like you doing it, you just gonna say fuck it and, and try to get back the next day. You Derek James is the reason why Earl got his ass. I, I think he got a lot to do with it. Didn't get that boy properly prepared. And and Bo Mac them had Crawford on point. You know, uh, I ain't paying him I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't have paid him shit neither. You try and train the whole damn uh, world and me too. And and I'm in the biggest fight of my career. You're gonna train four, five motherfuckers at the same time. That was that was fucked up to me. To me, it was uh, you know, uh Earl and his father seem like the same type of person where they don't really like to have all that confrontation. Uh, but I I I just I just felt like Derek James was fight training way too many fighters to not be. And then you ain't got no staff and you ain't been training a lot of fighters. You know, he just started doing that. You know, uh, 600 said, yeah, when a fighter win, he get up. That's what I'm talking about. You want to get all the credit, but then when he lose, you don't want to, you don't want to, nigga, you got to get the blame just like you get credit. I, this is what you do, G. When, when we get through, go look at my videos right after Earl Spence and Crawford fought. I gave it to Derrick James. I couldn't stop. Because, man, he sent that man out there on some bullshit. A lot of that was on doubt. A lot of that was uh, trying to have them under, uh, unprepared and being dismissive to Crawford. Uh, that trainer of the year really, 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 it's, it might cost uh, Derrick James what he done, what he done built. Because I got a funny feeling if Earl cut, when Earl cut him off, I think they said Mel done already walked away. And I'm quite sure Frank probably gonna be next. Frank was fucking with Earl. Uh, you know, they might all walk away from him. He might find himself back at that damn job a lot sooner than he think. You know, uh, you know, I, boy, that big head sometimes, Ace, you gotta be careful with that. You gotta be careful getting the big head. Uh, that money will change a motherfucker, man. And that's really what, that's mostly what it come down to. That little bit of money. Uh, I mean, Derrick James probably got a taste of some real money and some, a taste of some fame in the sport finally. And this shit got to his head immediately. I mean, and look how fast he got gas. I mean, he could not stop smiling and talking about it. He was training of the year. He ran, man, I got tired of him talking about himself. Yeah, Anthony Joshua knew Derrick James was, was on some BS for his to fight. You right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, this shit going to be short-lived. I really believe that Deuce Daly was good, dog. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, like I said, man, uh, this, this is going to be short-lived. I think Derrick James going to look up and ain't got no damn fighters in a minute. Gonna be the win from all these fighters that are over there butt naked. Uh, with this bullshit he doing, I think he, I think he gonna be the one that loses in this. I really do. Uh, I think Derrick James gonna be the one who loses. Uh, cause I guarantee you, if Earl continue to fight on, he gonna get with another fighter and look just as good as he always have, and probably be better. Cause Derrick James got him fighting the same damn fight just about every time he go out there. You know, uh, that's why Crawford was able to do so good because it ain't really been no changes. And that's because Derrick James only know how to train the way he learned how to learn how to fight. If you watch, if you watch Earl, now, go look at some old tapes of Derrick James. They all look just like him. 
you know, uh, but he couldn't. It, it that other shit that's in a fighter, he don't got that. That's why he acted like he acted. That's why that training here got to his head so big because he ain't never got no real love like this in the sport. No, nah, what? No, nah, no, nah, dudes, what he right? I nah, hey, dudes, David, I ain't see it. What what Crawford right on Instagram? Yeah, I, I went. You know, no, I I didn't see that. You know, uh, I I I just got back in not too long ago. Uh, I, I'm real interested to see what he said. Uh, but hey, shit, I mean, it is what it is, man. Uh, I, you know, shit, I wouldn't. I'm surprised Bo Mac ain't said nothing because, like I said, man, he was coming at Bo Mac on uh on some real, you know, coming at Bo Mac kind of the wrong way. You know, uh, dissing the man, called him Big Mac and all that shit. I mean, that shit wasn't necessary at the press conference. And that wasn't even Derek James. That ain't been his personality. Like I said, uh, he, he used to always, I, I thought he wanted to be in the background. Shit, that motherfucker got on every YouTube channel that would have him. Especially after he got that train of the year and he would talk. Shit, they had to cut the damn camera off. He was going to sit there and talk all day. I mean... He was he was he was getting that love he never got as a fighter. That's what when Derek got that Anthony Joshua the zone check. That's right. That's right. That money that money fucked him up. That money fucked him up. Well, he done got some checks before that, but the money, uh the money that got to him. And now now you wanna sue the man who if it wasn't for Earl Spence, would nobody know who your ass is. But and the, the thanks I get in the end is you wanna sue me now. Oh, man, he lucky. He lucky. That's all I can say. He lucky. Earl type of dude he is, man. Send somebody over there and, and get get with your glamour, nigga. You know, send me out there on some push. Now you're going to press me for some cash. You better fall back, motherfucker. I give you some, I'm going to give you what I give you when I give it to you. I don't blame Spence, man. Uh, send me out there unprepared like that, and then you sweat me about some money, nigga. Fuck you. And you sit up here trying to train all these dudes, man. When I got my biggest fight of my career going on, I, man, I ain't with that shit. You really. And if I'm picking sides, I'm picking Earl's side. Okay. I'm biased. Fuck it. Call it what you want to call it. Uh, but I didn't like the way uh, Derrick James was rolling last year. No way. I really didn't like how he was acting, man. I, and if I'm being honest, after the media workout, I seen time out there suing EJ. Yeah, yeah, suing him. I think for five million dollars, nigga, you got me fucked up. The way there, you get five million dollars for me. <laughs> it ain't no way f to for me to be in a slot, <laughs> nigga. Please fuck up with that shit. That's why I say, man, uh, <laughs> dude, tripping. Derrick James is on. He he, he tripping for real. He on one. I mean, he is on one. Straight up, I mean, the dude done bumped his head up against the wall. For real, for real. Uh, I see, and, 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 and it's real sad that it came to this. It is. It's real sad that it came to this. Honestly. You know, uh, you know, Damone Daniels, what's going, what's going on, dog? Salute. What's, what it is, my guy? Yeah, man, it, it's real bad that, uh, that, that they going through this, man. It really is. It, it kind of it kind of shocked me, but what did shock me is the way, well, I was shocked completely after Derrick James uh, got the big head with that train out of his shit. And then after I saw Frank Martin fight two weeks before Earl, and I and he really lost him. Yeah, he, yeah, he got the big head. When, when I seen Frank Martin look like shit two weeks before Earl was from the fight, then Earl looked like dog shit on the mitts. Did he go in there and get beat the fuck up? Did Mayo go get beat the fuck up? This ain't no coincidence. Right after you get trained at the all your fighters lost. And the only reason why Frank didn't lose because he was the uh the 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 headliner for a PBC show. If it wasn't for that, they he lost too. He did not win that fight. Not like Frank Martin, but the truth, just the truth. He looked like shit out there. That's because that trainer ain't, ain't trying to train the whole world and ain't giving nobody that proper attention at that. But I know it wasn't last year. Now maybe things to change. Uh, I don't know what he need. I mean, well, he need a new trainer. Shit, you know, that's uh, he need you know tune up. Just need to, he just need to have a trainer that had his undivided attention. That got a lot to do with it. 
He don't need, he, he don't need no tune-up shit. He's been fighting his whole life. He know how to fight. It ain't got nothing to do with that. Now, I mean, he, he might need one now. I, I say that now, but uh, just to get back right. But shit, I think, what was that dude's day? I, I think the zone may be behind this. No, this ain't got shit to do with the zone, dog. This got something to do with Derrick James. It ain't got nothing to do with the zone. Not a damn thing. Uh, uh, Earl fight for PBC. Frank fight for PBC. Ain't got nothing to do with the zone. This got something to do with Derrick James. That's what it got something to do with. Uh, he tried to train too many fighters at the same time. And he ain't used to training nobody but Earl Spence. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, Earl, he, at this age, ain't nobody, ain't no, ain't no fighter in their thirties gonna be fighting no two, three times a year. That shit ain't gonna happen. One fight a year is enough, but you need to have that one fight a year. Two would be nice, but they, they barely, rarely do that anymore because once you get to top level, you fight elite level fighters. You're not gonna be able to fight. Two, three fighters like that in, in those same year, you be you you get yourself hurt. So you can fight two, three times a year when you fight them dudes that's not on the elite level. But when you fight a caliber fighters, it's very rare that you gonna be able to get them that, uh, that many fights in a year. Uh, hell, it take time to get to, to, to make the fights. Uh, I'm saying the zone knew Derek wanted uh, what wasn't getting ten percent of the total purse, so they let him. Uh, Taste Ryan and Joshua. I don't, I, don't, I, I really don't think that's the case, dog. You reach it. It ain't that deep. It ain't that deep. The man ain't de wasn't doing his motherfucking job. That's probably why Earl ain't paid him, man. He sent the man out there fucked up. You know, and if you've seen how Derek James was carrying himself, all his fighters looked bad last year. After he got that trainer, it, shit, it went to his head. And he wasn't giving motherfuckers the, the, the proper time. He, the man has said he don't even watch film. He barely watch boxing. So I know you're going to be a top trainer and without watching film. That's why Earl wasn't ready for Crawford. Like Crawford was ready for him. Because his trainer ain't, wasn't looking at no motherfucking film. You can't, you, can't, you can't train five fighters at the same time and, get, and, and, and anybody get your best. I mean, I mean, I mean, fights you gonna watch in one day? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, fucking, how much film can you watch and watch? How much time you really spending per fighter? I mean, you know, uh, like Spence was getting hit too much against Ugas, so in order to correct that, that's gonna take hours in the gym. You can't, you can't necessarily do it in an hour and a half. What you you sometimes you might need to be in there for the whole day working on something. Well, you can't do that when you got somebody else coming in, in another hour and a half, two hours. So what you'll do is you'll act like something is right that you know ain't right, cause you got something else you not man. man uh, Derek James didn't know what the fuck he doing. That shit sound good, you know. Uh, yeah, I give everybody two hours and whoop whoop. Man, please, man, you, man, this ain't no motherfucking uh. This ain't amateur boxing. <laughs> this ain't no damn kids going out there for no four round fights. You trying to train top fighters at the elite level, a level that you couldn't get to when he was fighting. Man, please. Yeah, he did. Yes, yes, Bo Mac did. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Bo Mac told us. But that's why I say, man, you know, I don't feel sorry for that motherfucker, man. He ain't do his job, shit. I, don't, I wouldn't have paid him shit neither. Yeah, you got to sue me. Yeah, Virgil Hunter called out the 100% train for top opponents. Yeah. Yeah. You know, once again, that's why, don't you remember when Floyd was working with uh, Roger? He, he left his daddy alone because his daddy wanted to train other fighters. He wasn't going to fuck with him like that. That's why Ter uh, Till Brady left his trainer. He wants to, he wants to train other fighters. Wasn't gonna fuck with him like that. You know, uh, it, it, for for you to get the best out of your trainer, he need to be focused on you and who you fight. He can't be focused on five, six, seven motherfucking uh, different fights. And go and, and how you how you gonna get his best? You know, you can only it's only so many hours in a motherfucking day. And if you watching. 
a film of uh, Terrence Crawford then putting in a film of uh, whoever Ryan Garcia. What, man, shit, you can't do no shit like that. You, you ain't gonna be able to get nobody. You got everybody halfway ready. Uh, Virgil don't, Virgil can't, Virgil don't know what the fuck Spence can and can't do. He ain't none of this trainer. Virgil ain't never even fought before, so I don't be studying that shit he be talking about. Uh, I'm like Floyd, like Floyd said, I don't want nobody who, who ain't never fought training me. You know what? I, I agree with Floyd. Floyd, uh, I ain't paying a whole lot of attention to what Virgil say. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, a lot of them dudes be hating a lot of times too, you know, uh, but I mean, shit, I mean, Earl, Earl, you know, he, he know his own body. He know his own body. Everybody got their little, uh, theory, uh, when he lost, they, they wasn't talking that shit when he was winning. I mean, you know, uh, you know, people kill me with that shit. Really? You know, uh, I, I can't say about what weather is that ain't good for a fighter that ain't my fighter. Virgil Hunter cannot say no shit like that. Uh, Earl, I, he ain't never trained Earl before. You know, uh, that's just a motherfucker opinion. That's it. <laughs> that's it. He, ain't, I mean, uh, what you seen? What have he done without Andre Ward? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Said once again, it don't be the trainer. It be the fighter. The fighter make the trainer look good. You know, uh, that's usually what happens. It's usually a good fighter making a, a trainer look good. Honestly, uh, cause, uh, yeah, Bud got about 1,000, 100,000 coaches. Hey, you, you, whatever it takes. You know, uh, a lot of times you need more than one coach. One, you know, more than one, one, uh, opinion. A lot, a lot of, you know, uh, sometimes that's a good thing. You know, uh, you know, like I say, man, you know, most of these trainers, whenever, you know, like, uh, they'll have that one, they'll get that one good fight, and whenever he leaves, they leave. Because they, I mean, you know, it's only a few Emmanuel Stewart's and Angelo Dundee's and people, you know, and custom models that get three or four different people champion. Most of these dudes, if they, if they get one champion in a lifetime, they, they got, they did good. You know, uh, Rush 1000, so Earl was the perfect student. Come on, Spill, there was videos of, of EJ at the clubs and shit. He a grown man, it's not all on Derrick James and shit. And I ain't never said it was, but uh, the fighter is, the, the fighter is the most important part of this piece. It's plenty of trainers better than Derrick James out there. Them facts, them facts. Plenty of trainers better than Derrick James out there, so, but let's see if Derrick James can find plenty of fighters like Earl Spence. Once again, to get a champion, it's it's more. Okay, let me show you what it takes to make a champion. Yeah, you gotta be, you need a good trainer, but you gotta have a fighter with discipline. He gotta have that work ethic. He gotta have that drive. He gotta have will, determination. It's a whole lot of shit got to be in him that the trainer can't put there. There's a whole lot of shit got to be in you to be a champion. That ain't got shit to do with the training. That's what Floyd used to always say. Everybody look look good in the gym, hitting the bag, but get them up under them lights. Derek be posting on Instagram like he, uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Well, you got to think Derek James was a professional boxer himself. He couldn't make his damn self champion. What that tell you? What that tell you? Don't nobody talk about his boxing career at all. He done got more respect in the sport from being with Spence than he got when he did this shit his damn self. That's just the truth. You know, uh, I don't think it's one-sided, but I saw Derrick James' head get blew up like a motherfucking Mr. Potato Head or something when he got trained out of here last year. And, you know, it's bad when you start patting yourself on the back. And he was out there patting himself on the back every chance he got. That let you know he ain't used to getting no a lot of credit for shit. You know, because he act like he did he, he didn't know how to act. I, why did he have to change? Why did his personality have to change? Because he won a trainer of the year. Why he couldn't stay the same humble dude? I remember Derrick James saying he didn't want to train no other fighters but Spence. He kept, he was happy with his job and he just a laid back humble dude till he got a taste of that money. 
Now nah, he done quit his job. Every motherfucker coming to read, you ain't saying no to nobody now. So you're going to train the whole world. And you're going to train them all at the same time. And you think, don't hide no help. And you think you're doing a good job. Fuck out of here. Uh, you think it's a coincidence Frank looked like shit, Earl and Mel all. Frank got a gift. And Mel and Earl lost. He really lost three fights in a row last year. Right after he got that damn belt, that, that train of the year, he been losing his ass off. You think that's a coincidence? Or his head got, got or he got gassed the fuck up. I, it looked like he got gassed up to me. That's what it looked like to me. You know, and uh after the Ugas fight, and we was all saying Earl got hit too many times. They clean. Derek ain't clean on that shit up. You know why? Because he didn't have time to. He said himself, they all had an hour and a half or a two hour slot. So you're going to train five motherfuckers in the same day. Uh, Sometimes you need more than them two hours. But when you got it set up like that, that's all you take. You cut motherfuckers short. And more than likely, him and Spence probably had a relationship with something. They was in the gym all day. Probably now I gotta be rushing cause cause you try to train all these motherfuckers, and I'm the one got you here, man. Fuck shit. Hey, I don't feel sorry for Derek James not even a little bit, not even a little bit because uh James Tony and Antonio Tarver both said it. Rather the fight, they said they said Derek James sent that man out here fucked up. These is these is Hall of Fame fighters that said that so. Take me, take me out the equation. And they was at the damn fight looking at it. They saw the same thing I saw. He had no game plan. Crawford had a game plan. Uh, Errol Spence specific fight plan that Boat Mac them got him, sent him out there with. Derek J just sent Earl out there to fight. It's a difference between training a guy to fight an opponent or just and just training somebody. And that's what Earl went out there and looked like. You know, and uh man shit, I I I, I seen this coming. I seen this coming. I just when him when it, when it, when when Derek James couldn't say no to nobody coming to the gym all of a sudden you wanna train every damn body. Now you go now you can just fix everybody. Remember before they started on the mess at the workout, EJ was asking, yo, where Derek at? Let's go. DJ was go was doing interviews. That's what I'm trying to tell you now. That's what I'm trying to tell you now, man. Man, he ain't got so big, man. I mean, he really, he really got beside himself. He ain't used to getting. You can tell he ain't used to getting no credit for shit. He really, I hey, man. Uh, he, you know, once again, I it's it's a lot of people in the world like this. You know, you know, they act like they're a certain way because they ain't got shit. But the day they get a nickel over coffee. You found out they had all type of thoughts in their motherfucking head that they was keeping to themselves. Yeah. Uh, like I say, man, uh, and now, now, now you gonna try to throw a motherfucker out the gym, nigga. I'm the one built the gym. What you know, the trainer ain't fighting nobody. <laughs> they killed me with that shit. Like, like a fighter can't fight without them, man. Shit, if you could, I mean, it's way more good trainers than it is great fighters. That shit, you know, you know how many fighters come through them gyms with them same trainers before they finally get one and, 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 can, and can get to the next level because it's way more to it than a trainer. You got to have something to work with, too. I'm just telling you, even I'm a, I'm a good basketball coach, but I got to have some talent to win. <laughs> shit, I don't give a fuck how good a coach you is if you ain't got no players out there. And the other team got players, they have a fucked up coach, but if they got the better talent, they might, they probably gonna win. Talent matter. You can, I mean, talent gonna dictate how far your coaching or whatever you do skills, that's what's gonna dictate how far you can go. The talent that you, the talent that you work with. So, man, I, I ain't got no sympathy for Derrick James, not even a little bit. Yeah, hey, big as a blimp, I'm with you. You know, I ain't got a little bit of, uh, man, fuck him. That's how I feel about it. You sent that man out there on some bullshit, you know, uh, and Earl the one had to go out there and get his ass whooped because this man ain't ain't getting him prepared right. He took a hell of a beat behind that shit. You know, uh, 
that's Derrick James too. I mean, because he took all every time he went, he right out there in front of the camera. Now, now it's a loss, so it's all on Spence when he lose. But if he win, <laughs> yeah, thank you, dog. That's what I said, Deuce. And here's my thing. When Arrow lost that fight, I feel like Derrick James just stood out in front of that shit. You know you ain't sitting that motherfucker in there right. Instead, you hide from the cameras now. Now you don't want to talk. You want to blame the shit all on Earl, but when he win, you did that, huh? Fuck out of here, man. I, I ain't for that bullshit, man. Uh, you know, fuck out of here with that. You know, uh, that dude that dude sent all them motherfuckers out to have trained last year. Frank just had a soft touch in there. You know, uh, he, he shitty, man, please. Bottom line, please. Uh, you know, what, what, oh, what, what Crawford say? Damn, I got. I, I'm a, I'm a, as soon as we get off here, I'm gonna go pull that up. Uh, he basically said, "Derek, oh, okay, okay, yeah, man, I'm gonna tell you something. These fighters know who the motherfucking who who, who getting the shit done. No, no, no. I don't think you should have stopped no fight. Shit, it wasn't, man. Man, what is up with y'all and this shit, man? Y'all act like." <laughs> Sometimes you gonna get. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose, man. He, he ain't took no savage beat, or nothing like that. He just got beat up. I mean, hell, I I wasn't even shit. They ain't have to stop the fight. As far as I'm concerned, you want to keep going, you let them go. Ain't not. Now I ain't had no problem with them letting them fight on. Shit. I mean, uh, no, he, he was supposed to still keep fighting. You know how many times? Uh, you know how many times a motherfucker. Would have, would have not won fights if everybody did that soft ass shit, throw the towel in, cause the fight get rough. This, hey man, it's a rough sport. Every now and then you gotta earn that. Sometimes you gotta earn that money. Sometimes you gotta earn that money. You know, uh, you know, I don't follow the crowd. You know, uh, a lot of these dudes, you know, they didn't like Earl Spence to begin with, so they they they, they hear one motherfucker say something, then everybody's saying the exact same damn thing. I, that's one thing I know is about social media. Uh, Earl wasn't even ready to start for the fight to get stopped when the referee stopped it. If the fighter don't want to stop, then fight the fuck on. He the one in there. You know, because it don't. It don't take but one good punch to change everything around. So I didn't have no problem with him leaving out there. What you should have did was got him ready before he got in there. That's my thing. Uh, I, I, I ain't babysitting no motherfucker. My son used to box. You better fight, motherfucker. You get in there, you better dig deep. There ain't but two ways to come up out of this motherfucker uh, the round end or you get your ass knocked out. Uh, I ain't babysitting no motherfucker. My, both of my sons got out. Uh, damn that soft shit. Suck it up. That's all I can tell you. Suck it up. You you won't stop this ass whooping then. Don't get go down. Go down to the ground if you want the shit to stop. But I ain't gonna stop it. You know uh you you know if you want to quit a night, Earl could have took a knee. You know uh no nah, shit Earl and beat motherfuckers up like that too. I mean uh y'all forgot how Ugas looked after that fight. That man broke his uh jaw, broke all kind of shit. Earl broke, Kale broke orbital boat bone. Uh, Spence them fuck people up in that ring too. Sometimes you gotta get, sometimes you gotta take it like you give it. It's his turn. It's his turn. That's best to never get his ass all the way whooped. That way you won't forget it. <laughs> I fought a lot growing up. Me, I grew up fighting. I did, and I have had, you know, I won way more than I lost, but I lost some. I lost fights. I mean, any only motherfucker ain't lost no fights is motherfuckers that don't fight. <laughs> the simple as that. You get out here and you bump and grind enough, somebody gonna it's gonna be somebody to see you. I don't give a fuck who you, you ain't whooping everybody. You know, uh, you got Floyd, Andre Ward, Joe Calzag. You can count the motherfuckers on one hand. It's gonna come out of his career. Without losing the fight, Earl lost one damn fight to the guy who was the pound for pound champ at the time they fought now. And his trainer is training six more motherfuckers at the same time. He trained him. I mean, you know, sometimes it is what it is. I don't got no problem. A good ass whooping ain't hurt nobody but a pump. Really. 
Sometimes when you're a man that good ass with this one you had coming. You know, uh, right. In the UFC, ain't nobody undefeated because they are fighting every that's right. When you when you fight enough more, when you ain't out here picking and choosing who you get into it with, you might get your ass whooped here and there. It's it, everybody got somebody that can come see them. It, but if you ain't if you don't fight, you'll never find this out. Mama boy, they ain't did no whole lot of fight. She ain't let them. You know, but I grew up with my father. I had a big brother, a bunch of cousins, friends. I, I grew up thumping. And sometimes you're going to get your ass whooped. It's okay. It's, it's actually okay. It's all right to lose a fight. Sometimes a motherfucker might just be better than you. That could be the case. Ain't nothing wrong with that either. Well, there's something wrong with not being man enough to accept one when it because sometimes that might be what the, what's, what's on the table. Sometimes an ass whooping is what's on the table, and it ain't no way around it. And it ain't got to be in no boxing ring. It could be in the street. I done been in the, you know, I done been to the joint before. I done fought everywhere it is to scrap. You know, and uh, you ain't gonna win them all unless you picking and choosing who you fight. Like some of these boxers, like cherry picking. And now if you that type of motherfucker, no, you might not lose. But if you if but if you the type of motherfucker that believe in trying to get you some straightening, sometimes it might not go the way you thought it would. And it's okay. It really is. You know, I had to, this is why I made my son's box, honestly. I didn't want to have boys that's afraid to uh to, to face concert, you know, to face off with somebody. I didn't want my sons them thinking a ass whooping is the worst thing in the world. So they so they be in fear of it. So I had to show them that and my you know that just cause a motherfucker bigger than you don't mean he better than you. Uh them big dudes be getting their ass whooped in the boxing gym. My son was the smallest dude on a little team whooping he was whooping their ass in there. It shocked him. I told him, son, you didn't even know you you didn't even know what you could do. You know, most, that's why that's why kids need to have their fathers in their life, honestly. This is why these young men need, and not for no fighting, but just to teach you how to face situations that you might otherwise be afraid of. And just to know that if it don't go your way, it's all right. What ain't all right is you being a motherfucking coward or making excuses. That's what ain't okay. It's okay if some if you want to do get into it and he get the best of you. It's okay. It, it really is. It's not the end of the world. I bet you get his motherfucking respect though. You know, and hey, you don't know. I mean, I mean, it's, I had no problem with the dude that ass whooping. I didn't. Somebody had to get one. Somebody had to get one. Honestly. They mother killed me like cause he lost the fight. Oh man, the car, you know, when nobody said about the car accidents when he beat the hell out of Danny Garcia and U and Ugas right after. Ain't got nothing to do with no car accident. It got something to do with him coming in that night ready and Crawford was. And 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 Crawford took care of business. Hey, it is what it is. Ain't nothing wrong with getting your ass whooped sometime, though. Sometimes that's what's on the table. It's okay. I had a big brother. Uh, it took me years to get him where, let him know ain't no more of that. But for a long time, I had to wear them ass whoopers. It's okay. It's going to come a day when it stopped. And it came a day when it stopped. <laughs> Bet your ass on that. You know, but I'm just, you know, I, 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 that's, what, that's why I used to always tell my son, don't, don't you be scared of no motherfucker. For what? Bleed just like you. Don't, don't you out? Don't you bad start shit? But don't you be out here no motherfucking punk neither. Scared of what might happen because you think you might can't take them punches or something. I don't know what what could make cowards out of men, but uh, shit, man, you don't you don't stop no damn title fight like that. Hell no. You want to stop? Go take your lay your ass down there on that floor. <laughs> That's how you stop it. Get knocked out. But as long as you're on your feet, I'm gonna let you go. I don't tell you no lie, I'm gonna let you go. It's between you and the referee to stop it. I am not gonna stop it. You know, we're gonna have that conversation, boy. You go out there. 
if you get too rough or you take a knee. I don't throw, I ain't throwing no towel in. This ain't Rocky. Shit, you might, I mean, it's, it's, it's big money on the line. You better take your ass out there and fight. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you no lie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave your ass out there. You ask my son. <laughs> you ask my son. <laughs> you better get your ass in there and fight. <laughs> Believe that. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. You know, get, get going that right. You know, but uh, yeah, man, uh, yeah, but uh, I just want to see you. You know, I just was at it was on my mind that shit with Derrick James and Earl Spence, and I'm glad because I wanted to get a couple of other people's opinion on what y'all thought about it, man. Uh, you know, it's it's really a sad situation that it came to that, but from where I'm sitting at, that damn train of the year just really, really gassed Derrick James up. Some awful it did, man. Uh, and and it just seemed like. It just seemed like he 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 lost focus, honestly. And he damn sure lost uh lost sight on what's the main thing. Earl Spence is your most important fighter. And you treat him like he just one of these dudes on the team. You know, uh and I th and, and, and Earl paid the price for it. Earl paid the price for it. So, I mean, you know, I I don't feel sorry for Derrick James not even a little bit. Tell you no lie, I, I you know if I felt bad for anybody, be Spence for 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 fucking with him uh, and and him doing him like this and and in the biggest fight of his career. Now you want to train four five more fuckers at the same time. That made a lot of sense. <laughs> That's cause it, your big fight didn't mean shit to him. It ain't cause he ain't never had no big fight. You know sometimes. I mean, you'd be surprised that motherfucker be living through you and you don't know it. You know, uh, but yeah, man, that's it for me on this one, man. I'm glad y'all came in here and rocked with me and, and we'll do this again real soon, man. Good seeing you again. Talking with your young world, Deuce Daily, 600 Sid, Pure Pain. And we, we'll, we'll do this again for the week out, man. Y'all stay up, fellas, one.